It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the NC State head women's volleyball coach, Luke Savell. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Thanks for having me. I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get, to get involved in college coaching? Um, you know, I, I spent some time playing collegiate volleyball for Brigham Young University in the early 2000s, and um, I really enjoyed the process that um, – coaches were putting us through and uh, I like the holistic environment that university uh, life has to offer, offer a life of student athlete. Uh, of course, I wanted to play professionally volleyball before I kind of entertain idea to return, to go to coaching and eventually to collegiate volleyball. So uh, I coached professionally for uh, many years, uh, but I always was uh, looking out, keeping my, you know, uh, options open to maybe someday return to U.S. and jump into collegiate volleyball. And um, I was fortunate enough to be able to do that in 2015. What was it like playing for BYU? Uh, you know, at this time, and that's still the case, uh, BYU, Brigham Young University men's volleyball team is uh, one of the best in the country for last, I would say, 25 years. And uh, at the time when I was uh, being recruited, BYU just won national title in 1999. Um, uh, and uh, it's a volleyball, it's a, it's a program that has, it's a school that has a lot of volleyball tradition on both ends, uh, men and women. Volleyball was played at BYU way before it became a collegiate team in 1991. There was a lot of club volleyball going on. So a lot of tradition, a lot of great coaches went through that program. Uh, but the biggest, of course, thanks goes to Dr. Carl McGowan, kind of father of modern volleyball. That was also my head coach, mentor, and a big friend, even after I graduated uh, from BYU. So, again, it's one of the best programs in the country. Every night is sold out. So you have five, six, 7,000 fans cheering you on. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful campus, safe, uh, a lot of great people. And uh, that was probably, I would say, the best time of my life I spent with my wife at BYU as a, as a student athlete and later on as a coach. What was that like, obviously, becoming a student athlete and then obviously going into coaching at BYU? How was that? Is that the mm -hmm. question? Mm -hmm. um, like I said, it's a, a very supportive uh, athletic department. Um, they, they have a nice vision and they want volleyball to be top notch programs, both on men and women. So resources and the facilities and everything that you need to be, to be great, to be successful are there for you. And on top of everything, you know, Cougar nation is just like here at, at NC state pay pack family. They're extremely passionate and they know sports and uh, they support, that's what they do. They come, they show up and they cheer you on and uh, they make your stay and your experience very special, uh, no matter uh, what your, your, your uh, job is there, student athlete or head coach, assistant coach or anything else. As long as you're part of the department, uh, it's a pretty special experience. What was it like for you to coach the ACG volley? Yeah, ACH actually, um, at the time, that's a, that's a professional men's team uh, based uh, in Slovenia. That's where I'm coming from, uh, capital city, Ljubljana. And uh, it's been one of the best teams in Europe, especially in the region where I'm coming from. Um, team that is winning national championships, that it's competing in the best league in the world called Champions League which means uh, champions of all European countries, they play together and they try to, you know, uh, win that. It's called Champions League. Um, so I was very fortunate that early, early on in my career, 
I was able to coach one of the best teams in, 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 in Europe that therefore one of the best teams in the world. Um, my, my coaching path is very unique. I went from playing straight to being a head coach. So usually you got to work your way up, probably volunteer assistant for a few years, and then you got to prove yourself to be head coach. But my first gig was head coaching job. Um, and later on, when I returned to U.S., I had to pay my dues as an assistant coach. Uh, but here I am again being a head coach. But again, that was the highest level of volleyball that you can play and coach. It was with this team from uh, uh, Ljubljana, Slovenia. And, uh, you know, we had some great success. We won national championship a couple of times in a row. And uh, um, success coaching that team kind of elevate me and gave me opportunity then to have another stop, very successful stop in my coaching or coaching men's national team, Slovenia men's national team. Um, and that kind of shoot me in the world of a uh, coaching um, as a being one of the most successful coaches at the time. And that opened a lot of doors for me. What was that experience like of getting to coach the national team? Uh, you know, you coach your national team and that's probably the highest achievement for an individual either coaching or um, playing for your country for your flag for your you know for your national anthem uh, at the time we were very young but very talented group uh, that was in 2012 13 and 14 and going from being, I don't know, maybe number 35 ranked team in the world. Now this team is ranked number seven in the world. And it's one of the best teams in the, in, in the world. So uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to work with this young group of men at the time that are now, some of them are about to retire, but they had a really successful um, careers. And I was very fortunate to be part of it. And again, I was also the youngest coach coaching national teams in Europe at the time. So I was very young, uh, still very inexperienced. So um, I learned a lot uh, by coaching that national team. And um, that kind of opened my door uh, and kind of sealed the deal for me that I want to be coach uh, full time uh, for the rest of my life. What was it like to get the opportunity to work with the U.S. national team? Um, you know, USA Volleyball uh internationally uh is one of the if not the most respected institutions in the game of volleyball um both men and women national team they're extremely successful men team won three gold olympic medals so far and a bunch of silver and bronze and uh women's side had a tremendous level of success uh also winning a lot of medals but we were missing that one, you know, gold Olympic medal that we were fortunate enough to win uh, this summer in Tokyo. Um, so it, it was a great honor for me to represent USA, to work along some of the greats in, in our game, especially Karch Kirai, you know, head coach. And uh, he's one of, he's the greatest player in the history of the game. And, you know, with uh, winning this gold Olympic medal, he, he positioned himself to be also one of the best coaches ever. So, um, again, it was an honor and, um, I was very fortunate to be, to be able to work with that team and to have uh, a tremendous amount of success. What was it like in 2018 and 19 going to the world world championship and then obviously going to the Olympics in 2020? Um, so, uh, our schedule, international schedule, it's extremely busy. Um, but three biggest competitions that you get to play that you get to, uh, hopefully, if you're good enough to participate, is World Championships that we played in 2018. That was hosted by Japan. In 2019 World Cup, uh, this is 12 best ranked teams in the world. They meet in Japan. That's usually a year before the Olympic Games, and that competition usually counts as a Olympic qualifier as well. So again, another another. those are two events prior to the Olympics that are... Yeah, something you dream about to ever participate and win medals. And um, we were fortunate enough uh, to do that. And that was a great preparation for us for the 2020 Olympics, which actually then happened in 2021. In those two tournaments, you're trying to figure out who are 
the players that you're counting on the most to make the Olympic roster. Those are very tough uh, tournaments. They go for about a month. Uh, you play a lot of volleyball, so a lot of opportunities to, to compete. Uh, you will be challenged. You learn about yourself as a staff. You learn about your players who can uh, make it happen for us when it really matters, and that's the Olympic Games. So those two tournaments, World Championships and World Cup, usually for us serve as a preparation for the biggest um, tournament, of, tournament of the quad of the four years. In this case, it was five years because of the postponement to the Olympic Games. Um, and yeah, we went through some very rough patches in 2018 World Cup. We didn't medal a world championship. We didn't medal there. We took fifth, which was a big disappointment. But without 2018, um, we don't learn what we learned about uh, us as a group. So we were able to make some adjustments and to be very successful in 2019. And of course, more than obvious, winning gold medal in uh, this year's Olympic Games. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of things that come come to place uh, uh, where you're building a successful winning team. What was it like getting to coach in the Olympics? Uh, it's, you know, it's the biggest tournament that you will ever, you will ever compete. Just a few, just a handful of teams get to be there. It's extremely hard to qualify to go to Olympic Games. Just for an example, uh, World Championships, I think there's 32 teams. Uh, Olympic Games, only 12. And uh, you got to be the best in your region, in your continent. And then you got to be also the best in the world to even qualify. So um, 12, 10 out of 12 teams that participate in the Olympic Games are the best and there's two teams usually those are teams from africa that are not that as good uh, but the other the rest of the pool is scary good so um it has never happened i don't think so maybe once where team that wins gold olympic medal would just cruise through the tournament win every match and then win gold there's always upsets there's always um ways that you know you gotta you gotta you, you got to be ready for where you're going to lose or maybe two in a row and you, you got to recover and push on. So it's very intense tournament. Um, uh, pressure is on. Everybody knows that's probably our only chance in our lifetime. So we got to be at our best mentally, physically. Um, and uh, we were very fortunate and very successful at prepping our team to be at their best when we needed that the most. Um, but I, like I said, the best athletes uh, get together uh, in the Olympic Village and you get to see all the elite athletes and uh, learn from each other. And then you also have to compete. And that's the toughest part. Keep your head straight and not being tempted by everything else that's going around the Olympic Village, uh, that you stay the course, that you stay focused for three weeks um, that you get to spend in uh, Olympic Village and two weeks that competition is going on. So it's a, it's a demanding task. That's why only a small percentage of, uh, you know, po human population can do that. So uh, a unique, unique tournament um, that you're preparing for all your life if you're fortunate enough. How has obviously coaching the U.S. national team helped you to where you are now coaching NC State's college volleyball team? You know, it's volleyball, no matter the level. You, 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 there is a volleyball net and there is a court that it's same dimension and there's a, probably a bucket of volleyballs and now how can we get better and be do things better than everybody else is doing everybody else is doing it so um, you know uh, philosophically we were very aligned when it comes to USA national team so a lot of things that I was doing in the past before joining USA team we were doing during my stay with USA team and of course, you're, you're, you're learning on the way and trying to, to use everything that you've learned along the way here at NC State. But the biggest thing is always, you know, uh, we're, we're people, we're human, and it comes down to how good your relationships are. Um, and I learned a lot, you know, uh, uh, through my work with NC, with the USA and coaching staff and people there, how can I improve my uh, relationship with my players which is absolutely important if you lose your players if you don't have players on board believing in your philosophy believing in the work that you're putting in then it really 
it's not going to happen and um it absolutely helps uh, work with elite athletes how they go about business and then how can you transfer that knowledge and that type of behavior um to the collegiate level and uh we're still in the process of you know building the culture and uh, what uh, what we want to do here down the road so we're early in early stages of change and change is hard and um yeah, we're not even close to where we want to be in a few years. What was it like, obviously, becoming the first first time head coach in your career and going to NC State? That was not my first time. Like I mentioned earlier, I started my career as a head coach. So I spent eight years being a head coach before I got to BYU in 2015, where I took my first assistant coaching job. And then USA national team was my second assistant coaching job. So after four or five years, I'm head coach again. So again, I started my, like I said, my coaching career was very unique that I started as a head coach for many years before um, I became an assistant coach. So um, I'm used to be used to being in this position, of course, coaching collegiate, it's a little bit different than coaching professionally. Um, uh, but still, you, you are in charge of the program. You're responsible for people. You are responsible for making sure that uh, things are running smoothly. Uh, but that's impossible to accomplish if you do not surround yourself with a lot of amazing people that are better than you are in some areas of performance. So um, I'm fortunate enough that uh, we had that with the national team, that I have that here with NC State, that I have people around my around myself that are extremely um, good at what they're doing they're great people and that makes my job much easier so again uh, like I said um, I'm not a I'm not new to being a head coach and uh, it's just it, it's a learning curve always continues and uh, there's much more to learn what are some things that you have accomplished at NC State uh, you know I think there is there are some things I just um I don't think we spent um, any time talking about what we've accomplished. We solely talk about what needs to be done moving forward. We do measure things. We, we understand where we are and where we need to be. And hopefully we have an, enough knowledge uh, being able to take team from point A to point B. Um, I don't know what we've accomplished. I think we've uh, we're slowly getting in. Uh, in uh, I think we we've created an environment where people feel comfortable failing um, and not being punished for that. Uh, understanding that I think we're we we've accomplished that our players understand that what we're trying to do is extremely hard. Um, I think we've accomplished that. I understand to be great. Uh, as a student athlete, you got to be extremely organized, dedicated. You got to be great academically, and you got to do all other sorts of things that other regular population of, of, of student body doesn't have to worry about. And um, that's the big thing for us culturally, understanding that what we're doing here is extremely hard. Not many people can do that. Um, and um, the question is, can you do that every day uh, for the next four years? And I think that's where we're uh, having some success, making sure that our current roster understands what we're trying to do and recruit people that will upgrade us uh, uh, consistently every year. What's it like getting to coach in the ACC to play teams like Carolina, Clemson, and Duke? Uh, you know, it's a, it's a very powerful conference. Uh, just, just, um, Looking at the uh, tournament this year, we had, I think, six teams in the tournament. We were just shy from making the tournament uh, in a while. Uh, so ACC is getting more and more powerful. Competition is gnarly. Um, and, uh, you know, playing UNC and Duke, uh, we're really close with both staffs. We have a lot of respect for both staffs. Um, and it's just great that we have so many good volleyball teams right here in the area, in the, in the region, and uh, all of us together. We got to get better. And um, uh, so we can be successful as a, as a conference even more so. Um, so I don't see 
I don't I don't see UNC and Duke as a uh, like competition that's going to do or destroy our season. Um, uh, we're just staying the course and worrying about ourselves. And when we get opportunity to play them, that's great. And um, it's just for me, it's just like any other match uh, right now, uh, because our approach is not worrying about who we play. It's more so about worrying about ourselves and how we can be better on our end of the net. But we have a lot of respect for those two programs and they, they've had a lot of success in the past and you know UNC was in the tournament this year so it's good to have some competition in our in the net, in our neck of the woods what does a typical volleyball game day match look like you know for our athletes they um you know hopefully um they can sleep in a little bit maybe there's no not too early of the class um and then they have to you know uh, show up for morning practice we watch some video, we feed them, and they got to get some rest and probably uh, go over game plan a little bit again and just make sure you're mentally ready to go in, in into the battle. For us, we all have routines, coaches and uh, players. We have certain routines. Some of us like to exercise in the morning. Some of us like to uh, do different things. But there is a routine but it's all kind of dedicated towards being ready for for you know six or seven o'clock when the when the match starts um and i think we're it's a lot about routine um but nothing spectacular nothing spectacular we're just trying to keep every day the same uh so the match day is not like uh mentally uh overbearing for our athletes no let's approach every match just like we approach every practice you know, be ready, go in, compete, do the work, get better and get re get recovery in place, eat well, go to bed and study, go to school. So we're trying to keep it very alike, um, um, no matter if that's a game day or just a practice day. What does the recruitment process look like for prospective student athletes looking to play college volleyball? Yeah, there is a there is a significant there's a significant adjustment needed when you go from, you know, call it a club or high school volleyball to college, to college ranks. Um, everything changes. You, you train more demands are higher requirements are higher while you're going to a pretty tough school like NC state. Um, so you, you the biggest adjustments that this stu perspective student athletes need to understand that your student and athlete, and not much time left for anything else. And um, we we talk openly with our recruits, with people that we're recruiting. Um, we tell them this is going to be extremely hard. We're going to ask you a lot. Um, and there are just a few things we can guarantee you. Uh, and that's that we're going to work you hard, but you're going to also have all the resources available to, to succeed. Uh, and there are things that we cannot promise you. And that's the starting lineup and similar stuff. So. Um, recruiting process, you know, you, we are competing against the best schools in, in the, in the country. You know, there's probably five, six schools that are looking at the same player or more. Uh, so you gotta be able to, you know, you're a salesman, so you gotta be able to sell your product. So we gotta convince our recruits why this is the best place to come. And we know NC State has a lot to offer academically area is beautiful and safe. And we're trying to build something very special here, something that's never been done before. And uh, we're going to coach you better than anybody else. Um, and we have things to back that up. Uh, as coaches, we've all had some uh, nice success. And um, But at the end of the day, it comes down to each individual what, what they're looking for. And we know we're talking to young women here. And... Um, they react really well to very flashy things. And when I tell them I'm going to coach you better than anybody else, that's not really flashy. Uh, what I mean flashy is like probably they look at a locker room and what they get in equipment, what gear they get. So, um, but they grow and they learn that that's not really important. And, but it's important how we treat you, how we build relationships and how we're going to coach you. And how are we going to prepare you for the life after that? But again, when you're 17 and 16, that doesn't really stick with you. Um, 
And of course, the easiest way to recruit is when you are a winning program. And when you win a lot, you know, that takes care of many things. So um, we luckily win more than we lose. That's always good, but we got to win more. And once we do that consistently enough, um, we are going to probably have uh, uh, more success also when it comes to recruiting. But we're very fortunate. We just landed a couple of big time recruits. Uh, they're coming in this spring. So we're, we're, in, we're on the good path. Of course, when the recruits come in, what does the official visit look like? They can spend 48 hours with us per NCA rules. Uh, so they, they either drive in or they fly in. We pick them up at the airport and that's where the official visit starts. You know, it's a very, 48 hours might sound a lot, but it's not because uh, number one, you want them to watch practice or your game you want them to meet with the members of our performance crew, academics, sports, med, nutrition. You want to make sure they, they, they know what resources are available. Uh, and then you want, them to, you want them to see the campus. So you give them a tour and that's a pretty lengthy process. While we as a coaches, we're trying to win some matches, coach our team, prepare practices while you're entertaining recruits. And then at the end of the day, you got to sit down with them and with their parents and have an honest conversation there. Um, so it's it's a very, very busy 48 hours for, for all of us. And, you know, it's not just like we bring in one recruit. Sometimes we have two, three at the same time. So it, it, it's, it becomes a very busy schedule for us. But it is what it is. The bottom line is visits are for, for us to see and try to see what's the personality of that uh, of that prospective student athlete. And uh, um, that's where you can ask a lot of questions. They can ask a lot of questions. So we can answer a bunch of them. And uh, they get to hang out with our ladies, with our team as well. We want to make sure they know that we have an amazing group of young women and that they're going to have a really nice experience here. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty routine-like um, uh, visit. Again, you want to make sure they, they, they see the campus, they meet people that are going to spend a lot of time with. Uh, they also need to spend time with our team, watch practice, and at the end of the day, talk to coaches so we can figure out some things. What advice would you have prospective student athletes looking to play college volleyball? Um, you know, not, number one, they got to they gotta really be honest. To, for, to themselves and say, I do, I really want this. Is that just for me to pay, to be paid for my education? Then they got to go somewhere where they can prioritize academics over volleyball. Um, and uh, then they got to be also, hey, I really want to be great at this skill that it's called volleyball. So probably I got to seek for, for, environment where they're going to build me up, where they're going to um, allow me to be the best version of myself every day. And uh, knowing that also this is going to be extremely hard and none, nobody, I haven't met student athlete yet that would come from club in high school and be like, wow, that's easy. Or that was an easy adjustment. No, they all get punched in the mouth. It's so hard. And they need to know that. So they, they need to know that they need to set their priorities straight. What do I want from my experience? Is it academics? Is it social life? Where is volleyball here? So they got to have these three things in order. Okay, if I want to party more than anything else, then you probably got to look for the school where you can do that. And volleyball staff allows you to do that. Hey, I want really, really structured, very organized environment where I'm going to get better every day. Then you got to probably look for the school and staff that's going to guide you in that process so you just got to be honest with yourself because it's not gonna never it's gonna go the way you want it to go you know you can have these dreams and say i want to be great here and great there but then you're willing to invest nothing and you're willing to be challenged never that's where you're gonna run in 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 in, in trouble so number one you gotta you gotta set your priorities straight what you want from next four years of your life what advice would your future college coaches look to get started in the industry yeah, it, it gets, you know, it's about the same as with the prospective student that we just talked about. Do you understand that you will have to spend 
ungodly hour, ungodly hours in the office and traveling and recruiting. And you will talk to your players more than you're going to talk to your wife and your daughter. Are you willing to do that? Are you, do you understand that you will get critiqued and you will get also praised? And do you understand that that cannot sway you? That cannot um, change the course that you're taking? Um, the bottom line is it's athletics. You cannot cheat. You know, the, the score, score and results speaks for itself. But uh, are you willing to do all these things that I mentioned? Grind day and night and take nothing for granted and know there's going to be probably early on more losses than wins and uh, nothing's going to, your fir first win will never pass. Can you understand that you got to adjust and adapt every day and make changes and be learner? If you can do that, you're going to be pretty okay. And if you cannot do that, you're going to be in trouble pretty soon. So it's a very demanding lifestyle. You need people that are going to support you. That's number one thing. You need to surround yourself with people that are going to absolutely support you back home. And then, of course, staff. And if you, if you can figure those things, these two things, it's going to be just a little bit easier. Um, but it's a demanding profession. And uh, you better, you, you better buckle, buckle down because it's going to be a wild ride. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with the NC State volleyball program at? Um, yeah, I have my I have my you know Twitter account. Uh, I have my Instagram account, so you can find me there. Um, I'm not very social media savvy guy. Uh, I don't post anything personal there. Uh, it's all it's all about our program in USA volleyball and. Um, but of course, you, you guys are more than welcome to reach out and to follow me. And um, I'm going to be uh, more than happy to respond. Thank you again, Coach, for your interview. And best of luck in your future with the NC State Volleyball Program. Thank you for having me and uh, happy holidays to all of you. Thank you. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk Instagram and Brandon Sports Talk Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon. And you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Coach Luca, for your interview, and best of luck in your future. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.